Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nice to meet you in the third session, which will be the last one on the practical issue of research and academic writing. We have finished abstract or title or title page and the method now coming to the result. Results, if we are going to ask a question, how to present the results in an academic paper? As we can see, this is, for example, the first way of the presentation in tables, for example. And as you can see, we include the information that have been comes throughout the results in the table. And 4.4 plus minus 0.5, what this means, this means the standard deviation of follicular stimulating hormone, for example. And in the luteinizing hormone, as you can see, it's 0.6 plus minus standard deviation 0.10. So this is one of the ways to present the results on tables. And this is another table, for example, height after treatment. And uh, this is group light, control is 12 test. And these are the results. And as you can see, there is a significant mark here. Significant mark, which is the start one, means there is a p-test, okay, or so, sorry, there is a p-value based on the t-test has been performed, and these values are significant, which should be included in the table to indicate where is the significance of care. This is, for example, another form of presentation, body mass index, and here an explanation of the values. This is the mean of the values, and this is the standard deviation, how does it appear in male and female. And here is the p-value, so the significance value will be considered if the value is more than 0.05. In this table, uh, however, there is no any significance has been appeared because we couldn't see any significance paper, uh, any significance mark compared to this table, for example. This is another table comparing relative and rating results. As you can see, domestic company, international company, college, state university, as well, there is no any significance can be seen. This is another form, is the power charts, as you can see. And the color of the pars here indicate the uh, ears, for example, here is 90, 96. And here is 1997, so the difference between the two years, for example, in temporary stream, permanent stream, lake, and uh, as well, there is no any significance can be seen between the two years in the three domains. This is another two forms, as you can see in the par charts. For example, here the population in 2007, we can see here in Germany, uh, it looks like the highest, while here it looks like Estonia is the lowest. So from the vision by our eyes, we can recognize the differences, for example. This is, for example, a museum visit. This is a museum have evaluated their visitors uh, in four months, January, February, March, April, and they have evaluated that uh, based on uh, division of the visitors to adults, including male and female, children, including male and female. They can found that the children percentage or children number uh, of uh, that have visited the museum was the highest in March, while uh, the lowest in all four months, the lowest was recognized in adults in March. In the discussion, you can have some explainable uh, reasons why this looks like, for example, the highest, why this looks like the lowest, why this looks like similar. So in the discussion, you need to give an explanation, you need to give the reasons. But as we have said, and as we have shown you in the results, you don't need, you don't need 
to give an explanation. You just give the results. You just describe the results. For example, here, the body mass index, based on the age group here. So based on the age group, as you can see, the highest body mass index can be observed where? Can be observed in the age group 46 to 55 in male, while in female, we can see as well the same age group, which can be 27 plus minus 4.1. So here, we don't need to explain why, but in the discussion, we go for the, the discussion why the results comes like that if we do have uh, space to do that or we do have information. So results is the chapter of the main outcome of the study obtained according to the methods section. There is no interpretation about the results in this chapter. The interpretation may be subjected to the discussion. So, any interpretation, any discussion in the discussive chapter. Don't forget these basic things. Title of the figure, it should be below, not above. The title of the table is above. So when you go here, this is the figure. Okay, the title shouldn't be here actually. It should be here. This is the title of the figure. While in the table, the title as it is here. So title of the table is here, title of the figure is below, okay? Don't insert the figure or, or <coughs> figure of the table before its presentation or the table before its presentation. So don't introduce a table, well, a figure be, before giving some description of what you are going to present. يعني بمعنى آخر ما تجيش تحط التابل والفيجر مباشرة بدون ما تقدم البرزنتيشن. No, you need to present. You need to make some presentation as a description, not as a discussion, then present them. Don't forget significance mark and indicate them and I define them and you need to as well show us how many candidates you are work. Why? لأن sometimes أنت مثلا تشتغل على diabetic among obese مثلا والله أنت أحيانا أحيانا تبي تفصل بين ال obese based on the grades grade 1, grade 2, grade 3 based on the body mass index واكتشفت diabetes فيهم فممكن تدير لي table or figure يقول لي والله diabetic among ال obese in general ومثلا عددهم 40 ولكن في ال grade 1 أنت لقيت والله إن عدد الأوبيس مثلا عشرين في الجريد 2 لقيت عددهم خمسة في الجريد 3 لقيت عددهم الباقي اللي هو 15 وبالتالي number of candidate it should be shown في الفيجر ولا في التابل اللي انت قاعد تتكلم عليه الدسكشن الدسكشن شن يفرق على الريزولتس الريزولتس include experimental data but not for interpretation here you need to explain any surprising, unexpected, or inconclusive results. So here, the chapter of the discussion. Here, incorporate statistical analysis where applicable. Hannah, list all the major findings of the, your study. Hannah, follow sequential organization when presenting the data. Hannah, interpret and explain the finding effectively. Hannah, include a text figure table. Hannah, mention the limitations. Hannah, avoid speculations. Hannah relate to what others have done. So it will go back to the review of the literature. That's why we said in the review of literature is the golden chapter. Wow, our chapter up to the end. bank of information discussion. So don't forget in the results is a descriptive chapter while the discussion is a discussive chapter. Discussion. Chapter of argument, discussion, advantage and disadvantage, comparison, evaluation of the causes, effects, and evaluation of problems. The structure of discussion should be logic, acceptable. It should discuss the results and make an argument where it is needed. It should mention the previous results and make a comparison. In the discussion, you give interpretation of your results by relating and comparing them to each other, as well interpret the results by putting them in a broader context of literature, what did others find. So 
it is the chapter of analysis, it's chapter of reasoning, a chapter of explanation, a chapter of comparison with the previous results and the previous findings. You should also discuss the consequence of the your findings for the aim and the research question and basically you do need to know whether the outcome support or oppose the hypothesis and the outcome whether it did answer the question or they answered the questions or didn't. It is preferable in the fact that you a discussion with headings, with subheadings, with sub subheadings, and the expression of opinions should be in a tentative language. Focus on that. The expression for discussion has to be tentative language. It should be informal language. It should be tentative language. Back to that, before going to the next slide, had the result, it should be on headings and subheadings and sub-subheadings if it's possible and it will be preferable to do that. Going back to the tentative language, what we do mean by that? We do mean by that using some model verbs, may, might, would, can, and lexical verbs, seems, appears, suggest, perhaps, probably, possibly, probable, possible, uncertain, Assumption. So these are some tentative language and approximation. For example, almost a half, nearly 50 percent, less than one in two. So these are some examples of terms of words that we do prefer prefer to be used actually in the discussion. These are some verbs that we do like: appear, suggest, indicate might, can, could, will, would, possibly, probably, and likely. And these are some statements that we do use. It's possible that, it's likely that, probable that, unlikely, improbable, and these findings suggest that. So don't forget to use such statements, such words, such language, which we call tentative language in the discussion. So discussion chapter, how it's structured, generally it started by its introduction, then recapitulation of the study, then discussing of the finding, then what are the implications, either theoretical or practical, of your finding, then you need to mention the limitations and the recommendations of your <coughs> study, then you need to conclude this chapter. Why it is chapter 5 here? Because if we say introduction is chapter 1, review of literature is chapter 2, method is chapter 3, results is chapter 4, so we do have discussion is chapter 5. So here, this is the discussion chapter and this is the structure or the general structure of the discussion chapter. Again, this is the contents of the discussion section. Explain your results, then elaborate any unusual results and give reason. Compare all of the results with the previous research. And what is your deduction and describe uh, lessons learned and your recommendation for the future. And then what is your conclusion comes with and did the, your study have approved the hypothesis disapprove the hypothesis, answer the questions, or couldn't answer the questions. Again, this is the elements which should be included in the discussion. I'm not going to take that much time. Don't forget the study limitation, and don't forget to make some recommendations, and don't forget as well clinical relevance of your findings. And here is the explanation of the findings and making an alternative explanations for them. Again, we are still on the structure in other way, summarize the finding, linking to the literature uh, about the research methodology, explaining reason for the finding, contributed to the field, linking to the application now, what is the implication of, discuss the limitation, point direction for the future research or so the recommendation and presenting if there is a new findings, 
but I'm not with that. I'm going to stop here and I'm going to see here, uh, right here, the conclusion of your work. What is the conclusion? Conclusion of any research project should link what you were trying to do as stated in the introduction with your finding as presented in the main body. So conclusion it should be linked with the text. It should be linked with the main body. It should flow naturally from the main body evidence and argument. A conclusion shouldn't include any surprise, actually. And it should always be clear, simply stated, objective, not exaggerated, and written in the likely impact on the reader clearly in the mind. So you shouldn't include anything that haven't been stated in the text. There is no surprises in the conclusion. What are the terms that we are using in the conclusion as we saw in the linking words? These are the common terms in the end to sum up, in summary, to conclude, ultimately, conclusively, finally, as a conclusion after all. So these are some common terms as a summary, for example, here to recap. So these are some opening and overall opening terms that we are using for the conclusion. For example, here, these are the sizes of two conclusions in different papers. And as you can see, this is starts with overall, and this one is started with in conclusion. And conclusion is a very, very heavy task. It should conclude the outcome of the work and link it to the main idea of the topic without bringing something extra hasn't been discussed or hasn't been mentioned. Limitation is quite important and should be part of the discussion as we said and it is between the main body of the discussion and the conclusion so there is an area of the limitation as you can see, the main limitation of our study is that no follow-up data were available. In this, however, some limitation should be noted. First, blah, 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 blah. So we should, we should consider the space of the limitation. We should write something about the limitation. We should enumerate the limitation. I'm going back to the linking words. Limitation sometimes three, four, five limitation so here we are using the enumeration as a linking word and it's better to be honest to use firstly rather than first and we can go for secondly thirdly uh, fourthly if it they are five for example here th three so here first i don't know where's the second and this is the third but it's better to use firstly secondly if they are three so here we should say finally or lastly. This is more preferable than just counting firstly, secondly, thirdly. No, firstly, secondly, if there are three, and here it should be lastly or uh, finally. So limitation is important. Identifying them are of important to illustrate the weakest point in the work that might influence the result. Moreover, is to draw the recommendation for future work. So limitations gives us chance to go for future work and making the recommendation. L limitation should be inserted at the end of the discussion but before the conclusion. Recommendation, as we stated, it looks at the future. So any comment not concerned with the future has no place as a recommendation. Recommendation should follow logically from your conclusion and there is no surprises should be there. It should be concise specific, realistic, to the point, read the recommendation in isolation. You need to take the recommendation quiet. You need to know the recommendation coming from the text, looking for the future. So it do, you do need to read them very carefully, and they should be understandable. If you feel that your recommendation doesn't make any sense, you need to redraft them and look at them again. Coming to the introduction, although in an introduction who will first chapter to period, and while you are making a binding, it will be the first chapter after a uh, list of contents or list of table or list of figures or abbreviation, but it is the last chapter to be written. Why? 
We will say that while I'm going to explain, it is an essential chapter which tells the reader what it is all about. A good introduction should include everything that the reader will need to know before moving to the main body. So, هو الشابتر اللي حيعطيني مقدمة على التوبك حيعطيني مقدمة على the significance of the topic حيعطيني مقدمة على وفكرة على the problem of the topic حيعطيني فكرة على the aim of the topic حيعطيني فكرة على the objectives of the topic حيعطيني فكرة على the research question and the hypothesis of the topic so that's why this chapter is written at the last not at the beginning Don't mix the information. أنت في the introduction مش هتأخذ حاجة من the method ولا the results بتاعتك مش تحطها في the introduction. No, don't mix the information. أنت هتأخذ the information about the topic. So at the end you are ready to write a good introduction. Why? Because at the end you could have a good bulk of knowledge. عندك bulk of knowledge. عندك good information. عندك very very heavy material موجودة في review of literature which helps you and you good you do have a good understanding for the topic at that time so you are able to write a good introduction at this time what are the main inclusions of the introduction the main inclusion what has been studied before يعني شنو the previous studies in a brief But in concise, not brief and superficial. No, brief but concise, brief but highly focused. Why it has been studied? What is the importance for the people who came before, or even the ones that you want to do? And how it has been studied? So, what are the preliminaries? The aim, the scope. It should be available and clarified very well. So, good introduction. What does should include background of the study, problem statement. Research question or hypothesis or both. Aim and objectives of study. An outline of the approach take. The scope of the pro work should link between the theory background and previous research and your approach based on your hypothesis and research question. The background, that the introduction, it should tell the story how you have come up with your research question. ممكن انت داير سكان وماشي في خلال التوبك ولاقي ان هذه الاريا hasn't been filled that much or research question هذا مازال ما تغطاش او في areas او في بعض الريسيرش عطوك الايديا من خلال الريكومنديشن بتاعتهم so you need to bring it to me in the introduction it include the literature review to make it clear to what extent the question has been addressed by other The background for introduction ends with a problem statement, and you should clarify the problem statement. Let me tell you the problem statement. For example, return to football post COVID. Meaning the problem statement that I have is that all players in the elite athletes, I'm talking about the professional athletes, can they return to football smoothly? Or there are some steps. So guide. هنا يختلف حتى التايتل معناه معناه حنقوله الجايد تو ريتيرن تو فوتبول ان بروفيشنال اثريت بوست كوفيد انفكشن اه اوكي معناه شنو الستبس والخطوات اللي لازم نديرهن مع اي رياضي في نادي اصيب بكوفيد كيف نقدر نرجع للعب which sets the sense of your specific question so this is the research question what are the steps in your guide that makes the athletes return to football post كوفيد Research question that will be answered in your thesis or paper should be stated in the first sentence or subsequent paragraph. يعني لازم تكون research question لازم يكون واضح جدا بعد the problem statement. To formulate a good research question, some consideration should be followed. الحقيقة steps to write thesis introduction. Hook the reader's interest. Identify the research gap. State the background information. Pack your topic with relevant literature. لازم لازم تكون في relevant information. ما تكونش حاجة بازار. Mention the hypothesis or research question. Provide significance of your research. لازم تعطيني the importance of this research. Outline the research questions. State the research objectives. Create an outline. Discuss the research methodology. I'm not with that. Okay, I'm not with that. يعني مش الميثودولوجي بتاعتك ممكن تدير 
الريسيرش ميثودولوجي في البريفيوس ريسيرش هاو ذي ديد بيرفورم انت مش حتحكي على الريسيرش ميثودولوجي بتاعتك انت انت حتحكي على الريسيرش ميثودولوجي بتاعت الناس الثانيه انك كيف تناولوا هذا البحث او كيف تناولوا هذا التوبيك اند فاينلايز يور انتروداكشن باي ستيتينج الايمز ان كلير واي This is another thing you should care about. This research, this research is important. What is already known, what is not known, why important, and what are the research aim. وهذا طبعا يشرح لك في الباك جراوند. So it is the last chapter to be written, but the first chapter to be read. What are the appendices? And quickly, the appendix. Some people will need to refer to them. Amplifying or substantial findings in the main body, as you can see, presenting documents, evidence to support. يعني هي الملحقات اللي ممكن نلحقهم بالبحث. ممكن ندير presenting لي detailed results بتاع experiments. ممكن ندير presenting لي statistical information. ممكن ندير illustration لي relationship. ممكن explaining لي systems و procedures و charts استخدمناها. The most important point في هذا section and the appendix is useless unless it's clearly referred to it in the main body of the text. لو ما ذكرتش في التكست ان عندك appendix يعني مثلا انا والله قسمت الناس الى different groups of body mass index based on the body mass index category table باي الخاص بالW show معناها لازم ندير بين قوسين appendix one shows مثلا body mass index W show categories. معناها we need to insert within the text an indication about the appendix that we are going to apply. Tell the readers why they may wish to refer to it. Coming to the last bit, which is the references. What are the references to provide all information about books or journals or website which have been specifically mentioned in the text or from which extracts? I'm not talking about citation. I'm talking about the reference. How to make the reference at the end of your project. So how to write it from the book, from a chapter from the book, from a journal, from the website, and how to organize them. I'm reminding you by the citation, we do have Vancouver and <coughs> we do have uh, Vancouver way, and we do have another way to make the citation. So Based on the citation method, we are going to use the reference list. And I'm not going to say to you the other way of the citation. And you do need to go back to uh, the previous sessions to know which way we are using and how we are making the reference list based on the way that we are using in the citation. We are talking here about the reference list. I'm not going to take that much because this is need a practice, to be honest, a real practice. But actually, we're starting by the surname, as you can see here, then the initial, then we can put the date, and then we can here say the title of the uh, book. Here is the book, the, here the publisher place, and here is the publisher. So this is how to make a citation from the book. As it is here, this is two names, as you can see, surname and initial letter. And this is the date of the publication. This is the title. And this is the place of the publication. And this is the publisher. Making it from the journal is not that much difference. And uh, the difference in the journal that we do need here, for example, this is from the article. This is the name, surname. These are initial. This is, okay, as you can see, the date of the issue. This is the title. And as you can see here, the issue number or the volume number and the issue number. And these are the number of the pages, 61 to 72. So these are how to make the reference from the article, from the book. I will leave for you if you need to ask me how to make the reference from the chapter of the book to be answered. This is an example how to make it from journal, as you can see, because we can see here the page numbers, and as we can see here, the volume and the issue number. This is another example, 
And as you can see here, we can see website. So we did take a book, we did take journal. حنشوفوا هنا journals لكن هنا عندنا ال website وهذه أيضا website لكن I am not with this إن هذا public خلينا نشتغله هنا على academic website بنيم اسمها تشونا so موك ما بس تشونا الديت بتاعها 2019 هذا title التغيير الوحيد اللي ممكن حنديره هنا واللي هو متبع أساسا إن التاريخ هذا اللي هو update September 12 2019 it shouldn't be here it should be after the web page وعادة ما نقولش updated عادة نقول the last date of access or retrieved on ليش لازم نكتب آخر تاريخ لدخول هذا الويب سايت وليش لازم نحطه لأن I'm not responsible for any update after this date so it is important to know that this is a separate slide on the web page لاحظ حاجة أن accessed 4 نوفمبر 2002 and this is the web page ما نجيش نكتب www مباشرة we should mention the name we should mention the date we should mention as well here a title and we should say the last date of access what is bibliography bibliography الحقيقة هو gives the full details of every publication referred to the text and it does include further and recommended readings but we didn't use these references on our text يعني هو reference نحن قريناهن مفيدات ننصح الآخرين أن يقروهن ولكن راهو نحن ما استخدمنا هنش داخل التكست بتاعها و... and this is the difference between مصطلحين bibliography and references so the summary of our three sessions first of all failure to prepare is a prepare to fail secondly you need to build your vocabulary and having a good language thirdly you need to learn a linking words and their uses then determine your purposes of the task precisely making a mind mapping which is quite crucial for you to perform the work successfully determine the sources of information and thereby the methods of the collection planning and preparing the components their headings subheadings of the task is important follow the common academic standards and the principles in your writing after the first draft you need to rewrite or uh, to read and subsequently rewrite if there is any mistakes has been observed to be actually an effective researcher you need to be a good writer and a good reader as well thanks very much dears hope that you have enjoyed with me the three sessions that we have built about principles of academic research and academic writing and hope to meet you again inshallah hope for you all success in your life assalamu alaikum